Okay. Good evening and welcome to tonight's Velo de Gamma Society meeting. I'm your host, Ibrahim Aziz. Before we start, could I ask you all to please check that you are muted throughout this session, unless you have a comment or a question to ask. If you wish to remain anonymous, you may do so by switching off your video and also renaming yourself. This session will be recorded and made available for the benefit of those who would like to hear the topic being discussed this evening, but cannot be here. So I'm uh, delighted to introduce Mimo Perufo from Aquila Corde Armonica, based in Vicenza, Italy. The company is not only one of the leading gut string manufacturers in the world, but also produces strings for modern and world music instruments, such as guitars, ukulele, ouds, banjos, South American instruments, rabarbs, and double basses. And Mimo is a tireless researcher into authentic string production for all these instruments. But in particular, he has made valuable contributions in this area for the viola de gamba and the lute family instruments. He has been making gut strings since 1983, published countless papers on historical stringing and given numerous talks, lectures and interviews, including one that I noticed for BBC Channel 2 in 2006. So uh, we're all looking forward to hearing what you have to say on uh, authentic stringing for vials this evening, Mimo. And on that note, I'm going to hand it over to you now. Whenever you're ready, Mimo, over to you. Yeah, I'm fine, okay. Uh, okay, thank you very much for inviting me to this meeting uh, together to discuss uh, uh, I think something of a new that happens in the last two years, uh, like, like uh, such uh, such as uh, hospital and gut, uh, what it means for the music, uh, and uh, basically, uh, two three months ago, uh, I realized uh, that the dance like exists. Uh, uh, a single article, some work that collect all the information we have nowadays, matter of a, of a vial strings, strings, strings types, etc. So uh, I, I was, uh, uh, I, was I, I, I was moved uh, to collect all this information because uh, ninety percent. Uh, are, uh, for example, informally quarterly, uh, especially those, uh, the, the, the work of uh, Ephraim Segerman. But uh, uh, they, are, uh, uh, they are not a uh, unique article altogether. So uh, 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 my idea was uh, to collect all the historical information and take in, consider in consideration all this one uh, to see uh, which is uh, the the whole situation because uh, some uh, articles were made, uh, for example, 20 years ago when uh, uh, the research in matter of gut strings were still in the beginning. Uh, but uh, thanks uh, to Patrizio Barbieri and uh, all this uh, big amount of uh, new documents, we have uh, different uh, uh, materials uh, to to consider, okay. Um, in short, uh, I, I was aware of this thing. Which kind of a, uh, which kind of a strings were were in use on uh, vials? Uh, which kind of a diameters, if it is possible to have diameters, or just an idea which diameters. Then uh, another point was the tension profile, and. Uh, the last, uh, do we have uh, original string samples or not? But uh, I would like to point out that uh, I don't consider me uh, a real expert of everything. I'm, my job is to collect the information 
open discussion, but uh, I am not the, the king of the strings, that uh, I know everything is not possible. Because uh, every time we discover something of a new, we can be sure that uh, things uh, conflict with uh, the, all the, the previous uh, theories. And uh, all the time, uh, most of the time, it happens that uh, something we knew don't confirm what uh, we, we were sure maybe one day before. Uh, so uh, the first uh, question is, uh, which are the historical source that they consider virus? Strings, strings, setups. Um, Another thing, uh, my English, uh, you have uh, well realized, is not fluent. This is why Enrico is, uh, is uh, here to give me support. And uh, believe me, it is very hard to speak English uh, uh, after Vasin. <laughs> so maybe uh, I have a flu, I don't know, but uh, this uh, makes strings even more complicated but uh, I will do my best uh, to uh, speak uh, my best English uh, ever. And uh, in case of confusion, I speak in Italian, but that just a few seconds, because uh, Enrico is uh, my, uh, my personal slave. Okay, don't worry, we arrive in the, at the end of uh, this uh, meeting uh, in the best uh, condition anyway. Well, um, coming back uh, to the historical source, there are just a few. I count something like uh, five, six historical sources. And uh, basically, we have uh, scarce, scarce? scarce information. Uh, I can start at the 17th, uh, um, 16th century. We have just uh, uh, Ganassi, but uh, Ganassi wrote and written oh. just. Uh, the question of a falseness of strings, buona corda, corda media, uh, but the string. So introduce the, the so-called Mersenne test, but it was very common during the century till 1930. When the Pujol, uh, in Pujol method for guitar, you can see again this way to check the falseness of string. So it was very common practice, but basically, Ganassi told us nothing. The interesting thing is uh, that suggested to move the bridge up and down, but uh, this discussion is not uh, for me. I mean, I cannot uh, be expert of a literary expert how to play the instrument, so please forgive me if I stay on my path only. So I prefer uh, don't uh, uh, don't invade. Uh, not to invade a space of luthiers or other experts. I stay on strings only. Uh, the very first information about the uh, concerning strings is uh, Mersenne, 1636, uh, and uh, about uh, bass viol. Mersenne wrote that uh, the bass viol sixth is made uh, using uh, 45, 50, up to 60 guts. What it means? Uh, in F formerly quarterly, I saw some uh, uh, comments in matter, but uh, I disagree about the results because uh, to me, 50, uh, 40 guts means uh, one, one thing. Uh, as Mersenne mentioned the uh, Roman strings, uh, uh, Italian strings, uh, I can suppose, uh, but it is not sure, it's just a supposition, that uh, he refers to Italian string production. If this is true, which are the gauges that came out from 40, uh, uh, 40 uh, 50 and uh, 60 guts? But uh, before, let me consider which kind of instrument we are talking about. Because, uh, uh, andiamo in, uh, come si fa così? Sì. Così? Qua? Sì. Eh, tu lo vedi, Marcel? Ok. Come si fa adesso? Condivisione? No, condivide, esatto, lì, su quello. Condividi, sì, dove? Cioè, il tasto, quindi, spostandosi in altro non su quel tasto. Con Vabbè, lo no. faccio? Sì, scusami. Sì, ah, ok, ok. Condivisione. Schermo, ok. Questa. 
You, you see the picture? Yes, thank you, Mimo. Yes, uh, I, I saw the measure uh, that they were wrote about the Varbrantesen length, but I disagree because uh, uh, the unit uh, was not correct. Uh, um, uh, if Franz Segerman take as uh, granted uh, like a uh, right, uh, the inch, uh, uh, no, sorry, uh, one, uh, foot, yeah, one, one the, the foot of the king, king foot. I don't know if it's uh, if it makes sense to you, but anyway, the French uh, foot, okay, yeah. uh, from Chapman 1957 uh, book uh, was equal to 32.8 centimeter. Uh, it, the, this indication were wrote by Lenoble Robert in 1942, but I discovered that uh, 32.8 is not correct. Uh, the right measure is uh, 32.48. I know it's a, a small difference, but it is interesting because the vibrates in length uh, change. Uh, considering that uh, the whole instrument is longer, 4.5 foot. This means one meter and 46 meter, the whole instrument. Okay. Uh, Merson wrote that it is a 5.5 foot. Uh, translating in a, in a centimeter, uh, a meter, they are one meter and 46. And we have uh, this uh, diagram of the, the instrument. So by proportion, it was uh, possible to calculate uh, the, the vibrato string length. Uh, well, consider the Chapman uh, uh, foot, uh, the string length is 87. Consider uh, cor uh, um, by uh, correction, uh, mm -hmm. the measure, um, it is a, a little um, less. The right uh, uh, vibrato string length is 86, 86 centimeter. So the six string, uh, Take uh, uh, 40, sorry, 48, Mersenne wrote 48, 50 and 60 centimeter. Now the question is, we, which kind of a diameter we obtain using this kind of a gut? Well, we have a, a big experience because it is almost uh, uh, two years that they were producing uh, strings uh, using wool and split gut. Uh, that uh, this gut is uh, okay is uh, uh, due to the fact that uh, with the three guts we obtain exactly the average of historical diameter for violin. I mean, uh, 64 up till, uh, till uh, 63, 67, with the average around 68, 70. So, by proportion, uh, we can uh, uh, calculate that 48 minimum 2 millimeter and 60, maximum 3 millimeter, with uh, 50 guts minimum 2 millimeter 65, maximum 306. 48, 50, you know, is the same, almost the same. Eh? And 60 guts uh, produce uh, a minimum 2.90 maximum 3.35 millimeter. And the average of all this indication were around the three millimeter diameter for the six string. Considering uh, that uh, the vibrator length is 86 centimeter, we can uh, try to calculate the, the tension kilograms, but it is necessary to to have uh, the option of the pitch standard in using Mersen time. And uh, I take for granted uh, that it was correct. Uh, John, uh, John Ellis, 1885, that I wrote uh, in, uh, in uh, a big book, the best ever, a matter of uh, the historical European pitches. Uh, it is uh, the background of everybody that study the historical pitch standard, even Bruce Aynes and uh, Irfan Segerman. All the, in the, the, all these three sources went in more or less in the same uh, conclusion, more or less. Uh, uh, the Parisian pitch standard in Marseille time was around uh, 
374, 375 for the A note, very low. Okay. And uh, Mersenne wrote that he calculated this, uh, uh, this uh, pitch standard using his monocordo and uh, uh, calculated, uh, taking consideration the, the, the old organ of pipes, or organ, 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 organ pipes. pipes. Okay, of course, we can discuss uh, in uh, the next month about the pitch standard, but I take this indication like a true. Why? Because I consider vice versa the so called FL product of the first string. Using this pitch standard, the first strings work with the FL product of 210 hertz meter that fit quite well with all the indications that are addressed to tune the first string as high as possible without a breakage. For example, John Playford is a good example. To make a long history short, the tension is uh, in a range of uh, 12, uh, 10 to 12 kilograms. And uh, interesting enough because uh, nowadays uh, such instrument with such a uh, longer scale uh, uh, we call nowadays uh, violon in G, uh, the tension of, uh, that uh, we modern string maker use is uh, more or less in the same range. This means that uh, probably the field of tension is uh, the correct one. But uh, we are speaking of uh, a, view, a bus value in, in D tuning. Um, so having uh, the diameter, the average of the diameter of the six uh, round three millimeters, we can uh, wonder which can be the wall setup. Uh, here, the, we, there are two different interpretations. One is the equal tension in kilograms. For example, considering uh, two millimeter, uh, sorry, three millimeter, we are around uh, 11 kilogram. We can take like, right, 11 kilograms for all the six strings. And so in this uh, case, the first will be of a 75, uh, 76 millimeter, dot 75, dot 76 millimeter for the first. Actually, I, I disagree on the question of a equal tension in kilograms for a very easy consideration. Uh, when we have two strings, one thin, another thick, under the same tension, the thinner stretch more than the thicker because uh, the tension spread on wider surface. So in the graphic stress strain, the thicker string stre uh, stretch less. The first string, because it is thinner, less surface stretch more. This means that starting from the same kilograms by calculation, in a practical, when you install the strings, uh, uh, thinner the strings, more the stretching uh, and the intention, it became thinner of a certain amount. By experiment, I verify that uh, why the six stretch just a little, the first string stretch a lot. And you can recognize this thing because uh, when you tune the first strings, you do a lot of turns around. What it means to have all these turns? That the string goes around the peg, and if it became longer, longer it automatically became thinner. But if the string became thinner, automatically the string drop. Now, for the physics point of view, when the tension is the same, it is demonstrated by mathematical formula that the field of tension is the same. But this, but this condition is true when the string has the same kilogram after the tuning, not before, not before. If uh, the tension is a 10 kilogram and 10 kilogram after the tuning, we have the same field of tension. And uh, 
uh, if the strings, for example, the first drop of 80%, it is clear that they will lose, lose, lose. Oh, okay, eighty percent of tension in proportion. So the starting condition should be a scalar tension. You should add eight percent of the diameter that will be lost during the the stretching. Uh, it's a bit complicated, but uh, all this thing means that uh, I strongly believe on the concept of uh, equal field of tension even on plucked, uh, on a bowed instrument. Uh, it is uh, right that uh, the concept of an uh, equal field of tension is uh, addressed in most of the cases on plucked instrument, lute especially. But uh, I have uh, some uh, historical evidence uh, that uh, we can apply this rule even on bowed instrument. For example, if you take uh, Athanasio Kircher, 1650, uh, uh, the big book of him, certain point, uh, there is the Kelly's Mayor. So I would like to show, uh, to share with you guys uh, what happens in the Kelly's Mayor. Come si chiude qua? Come si fa? Chiudere qui in cima? Così. E quindi apro il kick. E cosa è successo adesso? Chiudo. Ah, io vado qua. Eh, Dov'è il Kelly's? Mm? Ok, qua. Uh, ok, devo andare qui. No, ho fatto sì, uno sì, sbaglio. Certo, no, no, ah, sì, sì, condivido lo schermo. schermo così. E condividi. Sì. Mm -hmm. Ok, you see this table? Yeah. yeah. Ok. Yes, that's fine. Thank you, yes. And this is very important uh, because uh, Atanasio Kirchhoff is not a when no. But uh, if you read this, as take Roman Kelly's Mayor, violone, etc., is a uh, uh, 200 guts intestine for the, the fourth. One, uh, 100, uh, uh, sorry, I started for the thinner, okay. For the first string, 30 gut, 30. Mm -hmm. For the second, 50. For the third, 100. Then, 180. And then 200. The interval between 180 and 20 is uh, uh, more or less one tone. But uh, uh, considering this gut, uh, uh, this is what we obtain by calculation proportion with 30 guts, 2.2 millimeter, and uh, 2.85 with the 50, 4 millimeter more or less for 100, and so on, 5.52. And what means in matter of attention, this diameter is scaled profile that are produced in equal field for the consideration I have done before. The first string is stre stretch more than the second, the stretch more than the third is on. But actually the, uh, the equal field profile start. So uh, with this slope and then became more uh, even. And uh, I show you the, uh, ah, yeah. You see this table? We did yeah, a, but it's a bit small, but it's fine. Oh, yes, don't worry. I, come si fa qua? Ah, ah, oh, too much. Okay. This is the Kelly's Mayor with the note. A, A, I, no, come si dice? A, A, E, D, G. Okay. This is the calculation. I take, for example, 90 centimeters for the vibrator cell leg, but it is not important because we were speaking about the proportion between the strings. And consider Roman pitch of a 390, okay. But it is not important. What is important is the relationship between the number of gut, the note, and the tension. It is, uh, they are 35 kilograms for the first, 26 for the second, uh, 23.5 for the third, 18, uh, 9, for, uh, so on. The interval between the G and the last F is uh, clear, is a uh, one tone only. But what it is interesting is that it is a historical evidence that uh, the scale of the profile was in use in 1650. And uh, we are lucky that. Uh, 
Kircher that uh, lived in Roma, in Rome, in strict contact uh, maybe with the Roma string maker, the bigger uh, producer of uh, strings ever. I remember that uh, Patrizio Barbieri uh, put in clear that uh, every year around the mid of the uh, 17th century, half, um, half million strings uh, were sold to France, uh, and even more to Spain. So it, they were the Chinese of the, of the 17th century. They organized everything uh, in order to collect all the strings. Okay, but uh, this is a clear evidence of a scaled profile. I tested this set uh, and more or less produce the evenness of, uh, of tension. We have another evidence, but it is uh, very late. It is uh, Francesco Galeazzi Tolinese when uh, uh, wrote, uh, wrote a book, a matter of a violin, 1792, and uh, uh, he wrote that. Uh, the, the tension between the, between the strings should be even under the bow and under the finger. So he is speaking about uh, equal field. Uh, one day I would like to discuss the question about the Mozart de Colco, but I would like to show you last thing. So we close the question why I, th I firmly think about the film, not, not the equal tension. Uh, like nowadays it is uh, intended mm -hmm. uh, in kilograms. Uh, come si chiude qua? Così? Cosa stiamo cercando adesso? Chiuso. Uh, ah, sì. Serafino di Colco, uh, uh, 1692. Uh, we have uh, this diagram that everybody consider like uh, a, a proof okay. of the equal tension, but I discover one thing. Uh, uh, okay, condivisione, come si fa così, 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 e così. E condividi. Okay, give a look here. We, we see uh, the sacchette, come si dice, bag. Bags, small bags. Over the same, uh, we can suppose that they have the same weight because the dimensions are the same and it's very important all they are in the same position in the floor okay but it is not realistic because a thinner the string uh, stretch more longer the stretch this is not uh, real i show you what the real happens because i have done the test on uh, an ukulele because i haven't uh, with me a violin and uh, my grandfather. I had the violin of my grandfather. I was not scared to destroy it, but this is an experiment. So, uh, uh, ukulele uh, worked pretty well. I show you what uh, what happens uh, in the reality, not in a, in a fake diagram. Aspetta, lo mettiamo così, così. But maybe they have a question. Uh, excuse me, uh, I'll show you this thing and then I'm available for further uh, question. Uh, you see this, uh, this uh, experiment? Mm -hmm. oh, condiviso. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, in my mentality, a theory must be verified, but practical experience. Galileo Galileo should be followed every time. This is the very first time that uh, was verified the De Colco diagram. Uh, you see this situation, the thinner string stretched more, so it became thinner. And uh, because I installed the two strings of different diameter in order to produce by calculation a full octave, 1.2 millimeter and the alpha dot 60 millimeter, we can suppose that they play the two string, we have the octave. That happens when you play the two string, you have an octave and one tone more. Why this happens? Because the, the thinner string stretch more, drop to 56 and due to the string formula, when the string became thinner, the frequency goes up. 
to uh, so uh, to compensate this thing we don't shoot uh, uh, start from 61 uh, millimeter to i mean by calculation a full octave but the first finger should be with a thicker diameter the right proportion is uh, 66 when uh, i put under the same weight 66 uh, one millimeter point, uh, point 20 the 66 drop to 60 the 1.2 drop of nothing because uh, the stretch is there. So we have exactly the balance, uh, the full octave. And uh, you, if you uh, push, press, press. press the string, you feel the same feel of a tension. This is a practical demonstration about the Colco, but there is also Mozart. Mozart is exactly the same, but we have no time. Um, sorry, I stop right now to any question, please. Uh, okay. Has anybody got any questions for Mimo at this point? Yeah. Okay. I think it's probably okay to go on, Mimo. Uh, yes, but uh, my English is enough, so <laughs> more or less. Okay, I go ahead. Okay, but uh, uh, speaking about Mersenne, so coming back to Mersenne, I explain why I, I think about the feel of a tension, not equal tension kilograms. I'm happy because uh, discussing with uh, my friends uh, from UK, uh, I, I have seen that from the, the position of equal tension, 10 kilo, 10 kilo, 10 kilo, 10 kilo, they realize that it may be better to have a, a bit more tension the first and uh, to have a, a sort of graduation in this way. So I'm happy because of this concept that, that can be demonstrated by string formula in practice using uh, Galileo Galilei way experiment experiment because uh, my idea is that uh, all uh, the people that wrote the treatise in the past are uh, human being uh, can introduce a mistake why not even Vincenzo Galilei introduced some uh, mistake when they consider that the gas string are conical is not true the interesting is conical but uh, the final String, not. I have done an article for the Loot New right now that demonstrate in practice that uh, the intestine, intestine is a conical in centimeter, seven meters. But when you drive the string, the diameter down change because uh, in the in the position where the, the intestine is uh, thicker is a dilatazione. It's a, it's a dilatation of the, uh, the, the, the wall became thinner. The mass is the same. Just to explain that uh, sometimes even the huge, very important people of the past uh, sometimes introduce uh, mistakes. The same happens with the Mersenne. When, the, when we introduce the string formula, thank you very much to Mersenne. But in certain point, introduce a coefficient of one dividing 16 without any explanation. Why? Because he has not considered the stretching ratio when the string is under tension, it uh, uh, drop in size. The, the string formula is okay for metal strings because they don't stretch too much. But when the string stretch in this way, it gets thinner, so the string formula is not longer valid. We should introduce some further, further considerations, very important. Uh, uh, going back to Mersenne, uh, this thing, uh, using a scaled profile that produces a fill, equal fill, and uh, I have demonstrated that there is uh, almost uh, one document uh, at Anasio Kirke, we are having the number we got, we have uh, the, this profile. The, instead of to have uh, 0.76 millimeter, if you calculate everything in equal tension, uh, the first goes up to 82, 85 millimeter, and then drop step by step to reach the final diameter of 33 millimeter. And the tension ranging from 11 
up to 13. Well, I cannot give you sure things because I am a researcher and the historical evidence in 19th century are very scarce. So I prefer to tell you that there is a range. We can discuss about this range even in the future, but at present, these are, are, are my consideration about uh, Mersenne bus viol. Uh, then uh, the next uh, uh, historical source uh, is uh, 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 Talbot. We are in uh, 1695, beginning of the next century. It is interesting because Talbot gave wrote the vibrant the uh, vibrant length of the bus bio uh, 35 inches but which but which kind of inches the all inches that it is a uh, uh, of certain amount uh, uh, thinner than the modern inches but anyway by proportion they are 81.3 centimeter it is interesting because by proportion, if I consider the Mersenne bus bio with pitch standard of a 370, 75, more or less, more or less, and the supposed pitch standard in England, it is not my idea, but of course, Ines, Segerman, a few more, well, around 39, we have the same proportion. So it is a one, uh, fret less and uh, the pro uh, product the FL product is uh, still around uh, 210 that fit quite well with uh, what uh, um, Playfolder wrote about how to tune the bus bio and the, the tenor as high as possible uh, considering uh, Hey, here there is a very interesting thing, very interesting thing. Uh, in one point, uh, Talbot wrote, uh, listen, this thing is very important, uh, second violin equal to first viola da braccio, and then first viola da braccio equal bass viol first. This is very interesting. So, the violin uh, second had the same range of diameter of the bass viol first, but uh, be careful on one thing. Despite nowadays that we have all the ranges, 60, 62, 64, blah, 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 blah. in those times, this thing, thing wasn't possible. They, uh, the, the tradition was to collect guts to increase the diameter. So one gut was was uh, um, addressed to Lot first. We have uh, Athanasio Kirke that wrote this one. Two guts was addressed for Pardesu de Viol, but in late, uh, late 18th century. O Mandolino, uh, no further information. Three guts, violin first. And uh, uh, for example, if I take in consideration which is the range uh, that uh, we obtain using unsplit lamb gut in Neapolitan area using three wood gas. This is the Gaussian curve I take in practice after I have done something like 2000 violin first. This is a so this is a good statistic. Uh, qui up dove? Eh, adesso cosa faccio? Sempre lì dove vado? Qui, condivido lo schermo, vado qua e condividi. Ok, eh, this is very important because it is not something that came from Diderot d'Alembert documents that never were stream maker, but this is what happens in a real factory using unsplit wall lamp guard. Ok, eh, uh, we know, and it is a, a well-established uh, uh, tradition in all the 19th century, that uh, with the three guts was uh, the standard for violin first. 
Sometimes we found a four gas, but uh, this don't means that the diameter is uh, thicker. Uh, just that we have the same range of diameter, but using thinner, the thinnest gut available. When uh, you switch from three, three guts to four, the string is uh, more even, less, uh, um, less variation, and it is stronger, and Paganini was aware of, of that. But coming back to the situation, you see my... This thing, the you point, see that... Pointer. Uh, huh? pointer. The pointer, you see the pointer? Yeah. Yes, okay, thank you. Percentage and diameter. Well, with the three wool and split gut, the average is a 70. 70 is exactly 68, 70. 71 was the Paganini first prince that taken Menzo in Genoa in 2004, but it is also the other age of George Hart in 1874 for violin first, even the diameter more or less of Contro Riccati in 1760, more or less. Uh, so this is the other age with the three wool gut. The thinner of the Gaussian curve, the bell curve, is around 64. The, th the th thickest, thicker, thicker. thicker around 64, the other edge. This is what we obtain working with the three or gas. By the proportion, so the question is, if the diameter of a violin first was in that range, the question is, which was the range of uh, the second? It means the bass viol first. Well, the range in proportion, and the tension was a, a bit scaled, range from 82 up to one millimeter. This was the range of a, of a viola, da, or viola da braccio uh, first or violin. Uh, second. So we should face the situation, uh, uh, but uh, with a grain of salt, of course, we cannot tell that. So all the bass value in England use that gauge. No. If I see one black sheep, I cannot uh, conclude that all the flock are black. This is a, uh, but uh, is uh, rather. Uh, rather to have a nothing is better to have a Talbot, but uh, for Talbot, uh, the bass viol first was a uh, second violin, violin, the first viola da braccio, whose range was uh, around 82, one millimeter. This is uh, the situation. And uh, uh, tension. I calculated possible tension with the uh, vibrating string length of uh, 80, uh, 81.3 centimeter by calculation and the pitch standard 390, 390, 340, but things change uh, just a little, not too much. And uh, with the uh, uh, first string of uh, 82, and a first string of one millimeter, so the thinnest and the thicker. We have a range from 11 kilograms up to 18 kilograms. Of course, these are supposition, but we are into the range, not out of the range. And what it is interesting, even in this example, is nowadays with the instrument of such length, 80. 90 centimeter. Normally, customer want uh, uh, strings that produce a range of tension in kilograms in other age, of course, because we calculate the strings, follow me, uh, a slow, uh, a slow, not to, to, uh, to, to steep, to steep. It's too steep, but mm, gentle, okay. Uh, we are in the range of 11. 16 kilograms and produce uh, a feel that uh, most of the people consider good. Uh, the feel of tension to me is uh, like uh, the 
sugar spoon you put in your coffee. Somebody want one spoon, somebody want four spoon. Qual è la giusta posizione? Which, which one is the right one? <laughs> Both, because it's a test. <laughs> so I suppose that uh, these things depend about a lot of uh, uh, variable things, but uh, we cannot tell 82 is right, one millimeter is right. No, it is a mistake, considering that uh, in those times everything was not so standardized. But uh, for sure, it was uh, into this range, not out of this range. Uh, any question on this thing, so subject? Any questions at this point from the floor? Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, we are going to the end <laughs> because uh, uh, feel tactile. Okay, now uh, about uh, diameter, we have a nothing till till par de su the bio the viola par de su the viola. Uh, um, we should speak about Focchetti. Focchetti was a Neapolitan mandolino player, mandolino for, uh, for uh, courses, mm, plectrum violin, okay, Neapolitan mandol. Went in Paris and wrote a book. In the book, uh, Focchetti gave us all the diameter. It was incredible, like Arlequin, it all uh, different. There is all the strings are different. Uh, one is a gut, the second uh, brass uh, number six of the, the keyboard. The third there are two uh, brass uh, number gauge number five uh, twisted together like a, like a cut line, more than cut line. The last is uh, the octave is uh, the second brass in the uh, uh, octave position, and the last in the violin gut wound. So. A lot of a situation, but the interesting thing is uh, the uh, by the mandolin first is uh, and the part the two are the same diameter. So the question is, uh, which kind of diameter we are talking about? So we can come back to uh, the French uh, traveler and astronomer uh, De La Lande. Uh, in uh, 1765, uh, went uh, in the factory of the biggest three maker of Italy, Angelo Angelucci. And I remember that uh, French in those times bought strings, especially in Neapolitan area. If you check the method of uh, Fiola da Gamba, Forchere, for example, or Cello, Francois Raoul or uh, Arps uh, in all these metal are suggested Neapolitan strings. Neapolitan strings means wool and split gut. While uh, German, Austrian, French uh, strings means split gut. Why? Because uh, the animals in Italy were small. Uh, three guts produced the violin first instead. instead a, a lamb uh, in, uh, in Germany with a tre, three wool uh, lamb gut, you produce the second 90 till up one millimeter. So they were obliged to split the gut in two in order to reach the thinner diameter. But the beavers changed drastically. Uh, before, uh, but, but okay, part the soup. Uh, De La Lander wrote this information, very interesting, described the, the cycle, the production cycle, and it was very accurate, but uh, wrote, uh, the mandolino first is made using two wool, two lamb gut, the violin three, three is the standard, the violin second five, the violin third seven, eight, and uh, speaking about violin, this means 70, 90, one millimeter, or 16. This is the average. More or less the same of a contrary cut and the exactly the Paganini survival strings that are in Genoa. Paganini actually are 71, 
91 and 1.16. This is this set is exactly those that was in use till the end of the 18th century because uh, Italian tradition, uh, tradition never changed. This was very good, but uh, even huge mistake because uh, the Italian tradition was uh, easily destroyed by the German people where they were organized. We Italian, we have a big problem in our mind. We are soloist and individualist. That's the work <laughs> if you do business. Instead, the German people are very good to collaborate. <laughs> okay, maybe the right way uh, should be the Italian technology with the, the, the German mentality together, but never happens, unfortunately. Anyway, coming back to the situation, two guts are mandolino first uh, and uh, coming back to Fucchetti, mandolino is the same diameter mandolin first for for uh, the part de su so which are the gauges we are talking about a range from 52 up to 66 uh, no sorry 56 centimeter with the average around 53 but but Maybe we are speaking about a pitch stand over 390. Maybe I'm not sure. Uh, making the, the right proportion nowadays, uh, working at 415, it means uh, a range from uh, uh, 46 up to 52 millimeter. Okay. Uh, coming back, uh, uh, everything is okay, or I must stop. You you want to, I stop for question or to explain better way. But the way is hard, sorry. But I think we're good, Mimo. If you, if there are no questions at this point, we can carry on, and uh, we've got about a good, uh, five, ten minutes. Somebody this headache, <laughs> headache later. <laughs> I can tell everybody as a vast not the discussion. Okay. Anyway, coming back to the question. So we 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 I introduced the question of which kind of strings were in use in those times, but. But sorry, all these uh, historic evidence are what we have in our hands. The other historic evidence wrote about uh, the kind of strings that were employed, uh, basically the base strings. So coming back uh, from the uh, 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 16th century, well, we have no information at all. We can suppose that Italian string makers, uh, and especially the Roma string maker that started to produce strings uh, around uh, 1560, as the Patrizio Barbieri demonstrated, uh, uh, they always uh, use uh, wool and split gut. And uh, this uh, technology was uh, uh, so well preserved that uh, when they discover some uh, uh, not on a string maker that they use uh, split gut, they went in jail. I discovered a document of uh, uh, 18, 1846 uh, where it is explaining that uh, it is a fraud to make strings in Italy using strings instead of wool gut. I always wonder why it is a fashion, why they want Italian strings. Uh, they cost a lot of money. And uh, why? But, well, I discovered why. When uh, by chance I had the opportunity to, to discover the very uh, good gut address to produce strings, uh, because uh, you, you should know that it is like the spruce. It, spruce is not the same for the soundboard. Uh, if you go in Paneveggio in Northern Italy, you have the mail of, so I don't know the name, but a special spruce address the for sun bars. Well, it is the same we got, exists a kind of gut that is perfect to produce music because it depends by the race, but the race and especially the foods and where they live in mountain or in the flat. Very different and depends a lot if we were in winter season only in the summer season is terribly important. Well, I discovered this thing, and Atanasio Kike wrote about this. But in those times, I believe that it was a legend. So when the, uh, I must uh, correct, uh, 
and correct. Correct myself. Yes. Food and the position, mounted or not, affect the, the gut, the intestine proper, uh, bivius. Come back. Uh, making the first strings using wool and split the gut, I discovered three things. The first, the sound is marvelous. I never had a so beautiful sound. I like an experiment. Galileo Galilei is always, all the time in my mind. So I take the same gut and split in two. I realize the same string in order to verify if the sound is still the same. No, gut became normal. Normal. What the hell happened? <laughs> Why? Our split is so beautiful, and we have the violin third, and even the bass viol six. And it is a beautiful, perfect attack. Instead of a split, the same gut in two. It is a normal gut. And uh, second, uh, Bivio is uh, it stretch less. Uh, you go up in tune very fast. Don't stretch a lot. Don't stretch a lot. The problem nowadays in practice, in practice is, is uh, that uh, I have no control over the, the producer because it's uh, in a far country. So sometime, uh, but it is a, a a problem of nowadays uh, can break, but the musical properties are fantastic. So coming back to the question, now I, I realize why they, they research the Italian strings, because they were made in this way, and they, they made how they produce the string was uh, uh, well preserved. But uh, let me, video, mm -hmm. I'll show you a video that maybe can spray why an unsplitted gut is so good to make sound. Come faccio così? E adesso che si fa? Così. L'altra volta abbiamo fatto. Questo qui è l'altra che lo apriamo direttamente con gli altri. Come? Come? Yeah, just a second, we will. Sì, sorry, we should have realized come si fa. Tasto destro. Sì. Adesso si apre con. Ah, sì, apri con eh, FDC. Ok, e qua ci siamo. Adesso come faccio ad andare lì? Adesso, una volta che è lì, lo andiamo su. Su ecco, cosa? Lo fermiamo. Questo qui è il video. Lo fermiamo, lo fermiamo dove? Sì, sì, basta cliccare lì. Ah, ok. Questo, andiamo sul... Qua? Sì. Sì. Con Few second. Condivido lo schermo. Avanza. E, e si sceglie così. Ma dici che sì, lo sì. vedono? Sì, sì. You, you see the... the is in stop right now, okay? Yes, that's fine, Mimo. Thank you. Oh, fantastic. I explain. Uh, mm, uh, an intestino, intestine, uh, is not just like uh, the bike, bike uh, tube. tube. It's different. There is a membrane and a sort of a lace, very hard and stiff. Uh, and the membrane is a uh, uh, stick. Oh, on this, uh, this uh, straight, uh, very robust uh, lace, I don't know how mm -hmm. to... Lace, yeah. lace. When I twist it, uh, the membrane goes around, uh, around the lace, uh, that it is straight, uh, like a uh, uh, one string, goes around. Instead, uh, we, if you have a strand, this thing don't, don't, don't happen. Mm -hmm. And when uh, you split the gut in two, you lost, the, the lace because it goes in the in the in the uh, sorry in the right side of the strand that it is the for a very thick string because the best is the right side that don't have this lace. So I show you what happens with the video. You see uh, the lace. Oh, here it is. When I twist, uh, you will look here, you see the lace, okay? It is uh, very strong and uh, the membrane goes around the lace, okay? Okay. This membrane goes around the, the, the lace. 
Ok, eh, si chiude così. This is the only interpretation, but for sure things change a lot. Coming back to uh, uh, before to speak, uh, last thing, uh, we have uh, 15 minutes or uh, more or less. Uh, how many time we have? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it yes, we've got fun. about 15 minutes more, including any questions and discussions. Oh, yeah, I go very fast. Okay. Uh, well, uh, mm, uh, Which kind of strings were were in employed in Yola Gamba? Okay, 15th century or nothing. 17th century, uh, there is the question of a cut line, or better called rope strings. Uh, the first idea was introduced by Hef Segema, and it was the very first, uh, first, first time that something of new was introduced. And, uh, i consider Ifran Segema one of my best teacher. I'm uh, his scholar, for sure. I told him a lot of time this thing. We had a lot of a uh, fight discussing load the string or not. It is a good fight. But I'm pretty sure that all the guys that are uh, uh, that were reading, reading this thing uh, were very happy to see two Two, come say, fighters. Uh, two fighters uh, discussing things. Uh, okay. Uh, but uh, actually, in 1991, if Ephraim told that, uh, uh, yes, there are not evidence that uh, Rob, the cut lines, the, there are historic documents, so uh, he switched to the name Catalonia, cut line Catalonia, because they produce. In Catalonia, gold string for viola that were tuned in unison, not, not with the K of tail. So he supposed very good performance, not necessarily of tail. Okay, uh, this was uh, the situation. But uh, in my point of view, uh, uh, to be able to affirm that one thing is real, in my opinion, need two things. Uh, survival strings, original strings that we can date with the Radio Cambo 14 or another technical way that it was discovered uh, 20 years ago by Japanese because Radio Cambo is hard. Or uh, document uh, written by stream maker directly by stream maker. Actually, we have uh, nothing. We have uh, some supposition and uh, one book of uh, Ramelli uh, speaking about uh, catapult. Uh, Catapult. Uh, catapult, catapult, yeah. catapult that uh, these strings uh, and the UC rope strings are made like the thick string of a big violone. So he non refers to the whole family, but uh, only on the bigger instrument of uh, the uh, bobbed instrument family. So we, uh, this is uh, interesting because in my position it is not that I i, I don't think about uh, rubber strings, absolutely not. But I am not uh, totally sure. The same is uh, with the load of strings. Uh, this is a load of string, a modern load of string. We have uh, no historical evidence, I mean, piece of a small piece of a string, uh, nor uh, documents from string maker. But I have this painting that to me uh, means something. I show you this thing. Uh, When I see this thing, eh? uh, okay, come si fa adesso? Così? Dove? Ho fatto qualcosa in qua? Sì, ma basta cliccare lì e c'è il tastino quello lì di destra. Questo? Ah, ok. Condivido lo schermo. Ok. Uh, you see this? I take myself this uh, photo in Nuremberg Museum. When I see this thing, I have some question. Why the first two, this suddenly became brown? Is it just a color? And why they are in the position where nowadays we employ one string or something else? Okay. But I have another evidence, but not like on loose. You have another 
painting uh, that it is, uh, this painting is in, uh, is in uh, Germany, but uh, another evidence from uh, uh, a small city go to Modena town, like this one, that there is a same identical thing. Martinelli, um, this is the painting. We are in uh, Carpi town. Uh, so, condivided. Okay. I show you the wall. Uh, okay. You see the wall uh, uh, cast. No, so I don't know the name. Ropes. Uh, <laughs> Okay, this is a strange instrument, but uh, uh, I have a, I take the picture myself a lot of years ago. I show. Si può spostare con la freccia. Come si fa? Perché nella stessa cappella. Come fai? Così. Ah, così. Sì. Okay. This is a, the violone. I don't know exactly the big bio. The first two as are yellow. And uh, the, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth are silently brown and not a, a, a smooth transition. So, uh, sorry, uh, this can be a suggestion, but I'm the last that tell for sure these are loaded. Impossible, miss impossible. So, when uh, people see a uh, picture like this, it is loaded. No, no, no. We are in the same situation over the uh, uh, cut lines. Coming back uh, uh, to, to the question, uh, the problem is uh, that I discovered that uh, switching to wall and split gut, uh, a six for the bus value that uh, follow over the product, the FL product, I mean, working close to the breakage, uh, the six string take the thinnest diameter possible uh, with the right fill of attention, the, sugar spoon over your cappuccino, mm -hmm. okay. And then using switching to this kind of a gut, it work and it work in marvelous way. Uh, okay, uh, I'm not discussing here the question of the business and marketing. Uh, okay, we have a George, we have Aquila, we have uh, a lot of producer. No, I'm speaking about experiment in practice. I'm dividing it. Business from research, okay. These are just experiment. But uh, what it is pretty sure that uh, using wool unsplit gut, it it work. It work uh, just that. And uh, after uh, John play for the, uh, we started to have uh, the use of one strings. This is the last last uh, last thing. Uh, which kind of one strings were introduced? Basically, two, two, two kind. Uh, the, the time is very short now. Mm -hmm. Yes, ah. we know. we've got about five minutes, so we have to allow some time for questions. Yes, uh, uh, one minute only is enough. Okay, I have one minute only. Yeah. Okay, uh, I go very fast, very fast. Uh, okay, these are original demifile supposed to be original for uh, is the root uh, I see come si fa condividerlo very fast because the time is uh, yeah, going to the end okay okay uh, this is the last thing and uh, to finish all all the uh, discussion i have uh, this uh, table that are assuming all the information of a French bio, six and seven uh, strings. Uh, this table is very interesting. Uh, is uh, this one? Okay. Commissione. Un minuto. Aspetta. Okay. 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 Uh, this is the, the last thing. You see the table. The this this. Uh, I collect all the paintings showing one strings. Uh, and I can send you this uh, table, but uh, this is uh, the string number four, five, six. Uh, the double X is uh, the mifile. Okay. No means uh, that uh, the, it is not uh, a seven string vial. This is uh, what we have. Okay. It is very interesting because I open some, uh, some discussion, but uh, the time uh, uh, finishes right now. So I close and uh, wait for your uh, final question. Thanks. Uh, come si chiude?
Okay. Okay. Uh, Okay. Thank I, you very I, much. I, I, so, I, I think this is the opportunity to ask Mimo any questions from his talk. So from anybody who would like to. Has anybody got anybody got any, any questions? I I have one, uh, Ibi, if I if I if I may. Thomas. Uh, thank you very Thomas. much, Mimo. There's a wonderful amount of information here, but I'm a little bit bothered about the suggestion that the top strings on the French bass or any bass would be quite thick because don't you risk actually breaking the vial? Uh, the, the, the English vials and the French ones that were copied from the English vials have astonishingly thin fronts. And I've certainly seen vials where the sound post is in danger of bulging the front of the, of the, of the vial. If you put um, a top string on that is as thick as you're suggesting, is there not a risk that the vial will actually break? Crack. Uh, okay. Well, uh, uh, my job is uh, to share the historical information without uh, telling somebody this is the what it is right. But we have uh, the evidence that Talbot wrote this thing. So we can open discussion if it is okay or not, which kind of an instrument, but to me as a researcher, uh, I put on the table what is written, but I cannot tell you what is right or not. Uh, this is what I think. Uh, and I consider that I'm not a luthier and I am not a player, so there are a lot of different kinds of instruments. I don't know if uh, somebody over you guys have an answer instead of, yeah, instead of me, but uh, mm -hmm. but uh, Talbot wrote this uh, bass viol first is equal to viola da braccio first. He was presumably thinking of the relatively smaller viols that were common in England after 1660, and mm -hmm. he, in that would have allowed a thicker string for whatever pitch you're going at because you wouldn't have put such a load on it and I'm still thinking of for example the Henry J which is in the Royal College of um, Music in London uh, uh, apparently unaltered has a string length of 76 centimeters which is a lot more than what Talbot uh, well, it depends on how you interpret the Talbot. Okay. Yes, okay. yeah, so I quite agree. I'm, I'm still just a little bit bothered about putting as heavy a string. What would your recommendation be in practice for a French bass vial uh, of, <laughs> say, 72, 73? You know, the, the collision vials are often between 89, 80, 69 and 72 centimeters. Uh, yeah, um, you have been a, a good question because nowadays there are three different ways. Vittorio gave me a very thick spring. We are in the middle 76, 79, and then very thin diameter. Uh, I haven't announced where because the historic evidence are very uh, thin, few. But but there is a one thing uh, to that I can put on the table: the proportion about the instrument. Uh, in my experience, when a, a player ever think that this feel is good, uh, this feel of tension is uh, okay on all the range of the instruments uh, on arcs uh, very clear when uh, you balance uh, the setup uh, you the feel of uh, the very short strings uh, more should be as uh, must be the same in uh, all the instrument uh, of course the kilograms increase uh, but the feel is the same so by proportion uh, 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 this is uh, just an experiment but uh, uh, not uh, uh, my intention not to tell you that it is right but it is my fantasy so take this experiment. Modern uh, um, Pardesu uh, average for the first is 44, and bass viol 76. So 40 folks, 44, uh, 76, uh, and uh, 48, 50. What the balance? Uh, okay, the, it is a proportion. If uh, this is a true, should be true even in the, in the past time, and it is obvious 
we go up in the range of uh, 82, 88 millimeter, but considering which kind of a pitch standard, and uh, it is a jung jungle, jungle, jungle. jungle. The question of pitch standard is a true jungle, and uh, it is not possible to tell something right because uh, everybody has something against the conclusion. So I have an answer, but in the uh, historical documents, uh, it is written that uh, on, su on some instrument, uh, thicker gauge, another instrument, thinner gauge. So as uh, you prefer cappuccino or sugar uh, quantity is in your hands, not in mine. <laughs> It's a question of taste of a, of a kind of instrument. So I mean, the last, the last that we introduce something of a sure, of a sure. We cannot do that. Thank you, Mima. Thank you, Thomas. Anyone else with questions? Richard Corran, could I ask a question? Richard, please. Yes. If you if you stretch a string in one direction and you want to measure the reduction in diameter, that would be given by the Poisson's ratio. If we knew the Poisson's ratio of the string, we could calculate perfectly accurately how much you would have to compensate the diameter and tension to get end up with a tension string having equal weight. <laughs> Quindi lui dice se si, se si riesce a calcolare il coefficiente di Poisson del Budello si uh, potrebbe arrivare a... The problem is that uh, the stretching ratio is not uh, change. Uh, change away if you change the string maker, the material. When uh, you dry the string on the frame, everything changes. So you cannot uh, have any provision. Uh, uh, the, uh? Yeah, you, you don't have an absolute. No, I understand, but I mean, you know, just as you, you measure an increase in length of the string quite clearly, so you, you, you know, even if you just assumed that the total volume of the string was the same, that would give you a Poisson's ratio of 0.5. Uh, you could, I mean, you could do a calculation on that basis, but do you know that 0.5 is perhaps a little bit big? Yes, it is possible, you're right. Yeah, I mean, if in metals it's about 0.3. Yes, uh, I use another another way, but uh, more or less, uh, I consider the uh, how the amount of a stretching under a certain po uh, weight, uh, and I consider like a, a, a coefficient. Harder to explain yeah. now to yeah. me because I have not the right uh, way to explain. But uh, I, I, my, my intuition, you are right. It yes. is possible to do revision and compensate the strings. Because I think in, in your advice on some of the strings, you, you, you should add about 7% on the, on the diameter, if I re can recall right from your website in the so past. Come consiglio sulle prime corde, se è un coefficiente circa del 7% di allineamento. Depend, <laughs> because uh, when the, uh, a string maker makes make strings, uh, automatically change the twisting ratio. Right. And then if you produce, uh, uh, starting from fresh gut, rope strings and then smooth. If you use uh, one kind of a gut or switch another kind, uh, everything change all the time. So it is a compromise all the time. But uh, 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 performance should, uh, by a set and check yourself the situation then uh, but if if the performer changes the stream maker everything changes no, everything changes in the past there was a, a user a very stiff modern strings the gauge for violin first was 53 yes. nowadays it's a 66 why okay because we found a historical document but but also uh, uh, because the strings are more elastic. Yes. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much both. I think probably that's all we have time for, unless there is anyone desperate to ask a burning question. Who would like to uh, ask something? Go ahead. Okay, two minutes. Um, West Brown? Yeah. Oh, sorry. sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh yes, uh, so um, I wonder if there's any difference in density between um,
Wes, I'm afraid we've lost you. Would you like to try again? Yeah. yeah. The four string of a bass, for example, is almost like fishing line. It's very hard and stiff and, and highly processed, I think. Mm. But, but, and if you have a soft gut string, like I think of yours, it looks more like a whole wheat noodle. <laughs> and uh, the, the pierastros look more like fishing line or tennis racket uh, stringing. Is there a difference in density? Uh, any significant difference? No. Uh, the no? density of gutter range uh, 1.25 up to 1.32 is not a question of density. Okay, if you switch from a low twist to high twist, uh, the density change uh, uh, became less. Higher the, the, the twist in re, uh, the high twist, the density is a, a little less than um, low twist. But uh, the question is another. That the pilastro and the boss brand, uh, and me too, because of my teacher that I worked 30 years in Salarez Babolot, uh, I learned from him how to produce model strings. Uh, there are a lot of uh, chemicals other than salt uh, that they make a string harder, but uh, the density does change uh, too much. Is uh, more or less uh, the range is the same because uh, this chemical agent uh, don't increase, don't affect uh, the density. Uh -huh. uh, not uh, like uh, when they, I load the strings, I had the copper powder whose density is nine. Okay. Thank you very much. We will stop there. So uh, I'd like to just thank you everybody for uh, uh, being here this evening and particularly to Mimo and Aquila Corde. Please join us on our next session, which is on the 25th of June. And that's a technique class with Alison Kinder. And de details you can find on the website. And please also do check out our Facebook page. Website is bdgs.org. Co.uk. Thank you very much, everybody, and have a very good evening. Thank you very much. Okay, bye bye. Ciao, ciao. Uh, we you. hope to see you in London in November. I hope that bye -bye. is possible now. Bye bye.